Assalamu alaikum and welcome you all to communication theories one course. This course has a course code of GMC311. This is lecture number 15. And today we are going to discuss Nukom's ABX model of communication. I am Anwar Khan, lecturer journalism in mass communication department, cohort University of Science and Technology. So outline of today's session is, first of all, our students will come to know about communication's interdisciplinary approach. They will come to know that how communication is linked and associated with other disciplines in the 21st century and uh, how this strengthens the communication discipline. So we are going to discuss it. Then we are going to look at the background of the Nikon's uh, ABX model and the background of this very model will be in the form of the history and uh, it will be a short history so that uh, our students come to know that we are uh, from where the new com got the idea for this very model then features of Nucom's ABX model, uh, we are going to explain it and then elements of this very model and then finally we are going to discuss overcoming imbalances uh, and will this is uh, basically very important because uh, this uh, this very component makes this Nucom's ABX model different than other uh, models that we have already discussed so these are the five components or parts that we are going to explain in our today's session well the field of communication has expanded so much that it links different other disciplines like uh, psychology like sociology like political science like international relations information technology linguistics psychoanalysis economics and the list just continues so in the 21st century the importance of communication has multiplied right and tremendously it has multiplied and that is the reason that we uh, in the communication discipline have adopted different uh, theories and models from different other disciplines right and we have adjusted them in the communication discipline for example the model that we are studying right now Nucom's ABX model again has its root in the psychology discipline and from over there it was adopted by Tudor Nucom and adjusted in the communication uh, discipline. Another example uh, can be cognitive uh, dissonance theory uh, which was a theory uh, that was presented by uh, Leon Festinger who was a psychologist and his theory was then adjusted in the communication process uh, in the communication discipline. Similarly we have numerous other dis uh, disciplines and theories and models that have been uh, adjusted in the communication discipline. Take the example of the Karl Marx base and superstructure, um, right? And uh, uh, we know about uh, his studies that has a very uh, enormous impact on the communication studies, right? And similarly, the economics, I mean, what impact economics has on the communication, right? And that is the reason that we have the political economy of the communication, political economy of the mass media, right? And again, uh, it is very important. We have the ideology, right? The ideology which has been presented by uh, Karl Marx and different other scholars, how they have approached ideology, right? How they have explained uh, it from different perspectives, right? So that is the reason that we say that communication has uh, uh, interdisciplinary approach and it links different other disciplines. So the background of Nucom's ABX model and as we have already discussed it that it is in the form of the history of this very model. So let's have a look at it. So there was a psychologist with the name of Hedor and he basically carried out his research that what will be the condition of the relation between two persons in their relation to a third person or object, right? So he said that if there are two persons and both uh, if both these persons have same idea about a third person or uh, a third object so there will be a degree of consistency between their relations right and what happens that if both these persons have different opinions or different ideas about a third person or a third object so what will happen that uh, there will be a degree of inconsistency in their relation so basically he was uh, i mean he conducted his research on the relation uh, between two persons in relation to a third person and object and what he concluded that his theory held that there will be some patterns of balance when two persons have same idea about a third person or object 
right so he is his theory concluded that if the, both these persons have same idea about a third person or object right so there will be patterns of the imbalance uh, and there will be patterns of the imbalance right there will be patterns of the imbalance if both these persons right they do not have same idea about a third person or object so what will be the result the result will be see this one that if there is balance between both these persons i mean both of them have same uh, idea or opinion about a third person or object so what will happen that each of the participant will resist change i mean neither of the participant will try to change their opinion because they they are both of them they are uh, they are on the same page and if there is uh, unbalance right so what will happen there will be attempt attempts to bring the, the balance right so uh, his research basically concluded that if there is balance right then the participant will resist the change and if there is unbalance so what will happen that the participants will try to bring the balance so let's discuss the various features of this very model and how Theodore Lucom got the idea and he introduced uh, his model into the field of communication so first of all uh, we need to understand that this very model has been introduced by Theodore Newcomb. He is the originator and presenter of this very model. And then we say that it is an extension of earlier work by the psychologist Hedder. So that is the reason that we have this, uh, we uh, discussed the findings of the psychologist Hedder. And uh, you would be thinking that what is the reason that we are discussing psychologist uh, in our uh, this lecture, right? And what was the reason that we were discussing communication and other disciplines? So basically this is the point that you should not get confused that uh, when we are discussing uh, psychologists then you would be thinking that what is the relevancy of discussing psychologists into our field right then we say that Theodore Nukom is an American social psychologist and uh, he is an author as well and he has been a very renowned psychologist a review of general psychology uh, published in 2002 ranked Nukom as the 57th most cited psychologist of the 20th century so it means that he has been a, a very renowned psychologist of his time. Then we say that uh, this very model is very interesting and uh, because that this model approaches com communication from different angle comes in the balancing paradigm. Till now we have been studying about uh, interactive model of communication, transactional model of communication, interactive model of communication and there are other uh, models of communication as well. But this model, ABX mo model, considers communication, approaches communication from a very different uh, level, from a different angle, because he is speaking about the balancing, how to acquire ba balance, right, uh, in relations between each other and in relation uh, to the uh, third object or person. So, uh, his work, uh, it was published as ABX model of communication, and then later on it was called Newcomb's model of communication. So what are other features of this very model? We say that Nukong considered communica communication as a way in which people adjust to their environment and to each other. As we narrated in the previous slide that uh, Nukong approached communication from a very different angle. And the reason is that he, is, uh, he sees communication and he considers communication as something that with the help of which people can uh, have an adjustment or he, people can create a balance or consistency uh, with environment and with other people right so this is very interesting because in the previous uh, models we have not discussed this very uh, angle of the communication right so in order to achieve a balance or consistency or we can say peace and tranquility this very model considers communication uh, in that very category that people uses communication in order to achieve balance with their environment and with each other and what happens that when there is uncertainty and there is a disequilibrium i mean people are not on the same page people disagree on a certain point so what will happen there will be more need of communication right and uh, it means i mean from this very line we can uh, deduce the importance of communication like uh, i can give you the example of the jarga right when there is a problem then uh, people, uh, I mean elders and uh, senior people, they get together and they solve that very uh, problem. 
So it is just because of the communication. Jirga is a type of the communication in which they sit together, they dialogue, they discuss the issue, and then they, uh, uh, I mean, they solve that very problem. Similarly, when there is some problem uh, between two persons, right? So what will happen that there will be the need of the communication until and unless uh, we have equilibrium and uh, consistency. Then we say that uh, the model considers the role of communication as a way to maintain social balance within a social system. And this very line is like the uh, first one and the second one, that communication is important element to acquire social balance. We need to have social balance with the environment as well as with each other. So communication will be required and uh, the element of communication cannot be removed, right? Because it is so important in this regard. And uh, if balance is disturbed, so what will happen? Communication will restore it. Communication is the only element, uh, the only source with the help of which uh, we can acquire the uh, balance. And this is quite true that uh, take the example of the United Nations, take the example of the uh, meetings uh, which uh, takes place between two countries like India and China, like Pakistan and uh, uh, India, right? So it is quite true. And then Nucom, uh, Nucom concentrated on social purpose of communication, showing communication as a means of sustaining a relationship. So this one again, like the same thing that uh, he concentrated, concentrated on the social purpose of communication, right? In order to have social interaction with each other, how to survive in the society and with each other. So these are some of the features of Nucom's ABX. So elements of Nucom's ABX model, let's discuss it. Okay. We see that this very model, I mean, this is a uh, ABX model, which has been given by Tudor Lucom, and it is in the form of uh, triangular format, you, we find it, right? And we see that uh, this one, uh, A, B, and X, and it means sender, receiver, and matter of concern, uh, respectively. And this X is basically any physical object, I mean, it can be any physical object, it can be an activity, an event, behavior, idea, policy, it can be anything, right? So, we can see that this very model is much more different than the models that we discuss in the Aristotle, I mean, like Aristotle's model of communication or Laswell's model of communication or Shen Weaver model of communication, I mean, different models that we discussed in the previous lectures. So, this one is quite different than that one and uh, look at this model and i mean a is actually the sender he sends the message to the receiver and then receiver sends the message to the uh, sender and both of them they talk about uh, the x x is uh, i mean something like topic it can be anything that we discuss over here it can be a policy it can be fee increase it can be uh, electricity charges increase it can be anything it can be about examination right so these are the elements of uh, Nucom's ABX model and this is the model uh, which has been given by Tudor. So let's have an example of Nucom's ABX model so that we can understand it completely. We can say that A is a teacher and B is the student and they are basically discussing the very topic X. X, I mean it can be in the form of any topic but over here we can say that it, it is in the form of Nucom's uh, model of the communication. So what happened that uh, when teacher and student, they are discussing the topic X. So if students does, if students do not understand, so the phenomenon of unbalance will be there. And in order to overcome it, and in order to have balance between the uh, student and the teacher, uh, there will be more need of the communication. And with, when more communication takes place, so surely there will be balance, right? So that is actually the interpretation of uh, Nucom's ABX model that uh, when students and uh, teacher they are discussing some topic and the students are having some problem again uh, in the topic uh, after the discussion as well. So the teacher or we can say that there will be more need of the communication and after taking more communication the students may understand. Now this is an important slide and uh, let's discuss what are the assumptions of the Tudor Nukom and what he sees uh, about the basic components of this uh, relational model. The relational model which we just discussed in the preceding slide and uh, which speaks about the sender A and uh, receiver B and both of them they are discussing about something which exists in the external world which is in the form of the X right and this X can be 
uh, uh, I mean, it can be anything. It can be a person. It can be uh, a phenomenon. It can be a policy. It can be anything. So, right. So, for Tudor Nukom, he sees four basic components of this relational model. So, what are what are they? They are A's attitude towards uh, X, A's attraction to B, B's attitude towards X, B's attraction to A. So, these are the four basic components of this relational model and uh, according to Tudor Nukom, if sender and receiver they are on the same page regarding the x so there will be peace there will be tranquility and then decision will be taken very easily and uh, both these uh, uh, participants a and b they will resist the change because they are on the same page but on the other hand if they are not on the same page they have different opinions uh, regarding the X so what will happen that there will be uh, then imbalance and uh, there will be disturbance there will be chaos and this uh, uh, this will be a problem for both of them so uh, if, when there is imbalance so what are the different components of achieving the balance what are the techniques of achieving the balance let's discuss it so now here we are how to achieve the balance in the previous slide we came to know that if uh, sender a and receiver b both of them they are on the same page it means that the element of the balance is there but if both of them they are not on the same page right they do not have same opinion about uh, uh, about a phenomenon which exists in the external world which is in the form of the x right so there will be uh, imbalance and this is actually the imbalance which creates troubles, problems and which challenge the peace, the global peace. So what are the different techniques of achieving this balance? So according to Tudor Nukom, he says that there are three techniques. One is A decreasing the amount of liking toward B. It means that A is going to change his attitude towards B. It means that A uh, will try to change his opinion, his thinking and will bring himself, herself according to the opinion or thinking of the B. After that, the situation will be resolved. Or uh, what is the second solution? The second solution is that A is going to change his attitude towards X and then automatically there will be the, uh, the problem will be solved. And then what is the third solution? The third solution is that A has to work on B so that B can change his her attitude towards X, right? And uh, then the opinion and the decision of the A and the decision or the opinion of the B, they are the same. So what will happen? That uh, they will, uh, both of them, they will become on the same page once they have the, the same opinion uh, regarding the uh, X. Right. So these are the three uh, techniques which have been shown by Tudor Nukom in order to achieve the balance. So summarizing communication models and uh, you will be thinking that what is the purpose of this very slide. So the purpose of this slide is that uh, today we uh, discussed Nukom's ABX model. So this was the very last model. Uh, in the list of the topics that are mentioned in the syllabus. It means that we are not going to study any more communication models, but we are going to study communication and media related theories. The theories which have been given by different scholars, philosophers regarding communication, uh, regarding media, we are going to study about all those theories. We are going to study uh, media effects theories. We are going to study and uh, discuss audience uh, related theories uh, gatekeeping theories and sim similarly other theories related to communication and media so it was necessary to give you uh, a brief a summary or uh, understanding of the communication models that we have already discussed so during the course of the discussion uh, in the department uh, and then uh, in the online classes uh, you would have seen that how communication uh, flows from the very simple to more complex models i mean the aristotle model uh, we have already studied it that was a very simple model of communication and from there we move to more complex models of communication like uh, laswell's model of communication chen vivo's model of communication like nukom's model of communication right so from very simple to more complex models of communication 
we came to know and then we came to know that every uh, phil uh, philosopher or scholar has explained communication or approached communication from their own perspective from their own field of expertise like take the example of uh, Laswin uh, who has approached communication or media from the perspective of the media effects right and Shannon Weaver he uh, they approached communication or media from the technical perspective and similarly you come from the social or psychological psychological perspective right so uh, every scholar has approached communication from different perspectives and we also came to know about uh, uh, how linear model of communication uh, developed and how it affected uh, different paradigms different time periods and then we came to know about uh, interactive model of communication and then we also came to know about transactional model of communication in the resources I can suggest you communication models for the study of mass communication this is the book which is very important and I hope that PDF will be available so uh, go on the internet search it out and uh, you will be able to get a PDF copy of it and remember that it is very important these books are very important because they are not only important for studying these communication models in fact these are important and these will assist you in your higher studies as well right this is the second edition go uh, go there and search it out I hope that you will get the PDF copy of this very book so this is the end of today's session uh, see you in the next lecture till that Allah Hafiz